Right, so you're probably wondering what's going on. Well, welcome back by the way as well. Um, just helping getting some cattle in for a research project that's going on. You might have seen some of the cattle are wearing funny collars. Looks like they've got guttering on them. It's all to do with some uh, some research going on into how much methane they emit. Um, and they're given a sort of controlled substance of, or a controlled amount of gas via a bolus each day. And then through breath samples and dung and urine samples, you can see how much comes back out. Um, to see how much they're putting out into the atmosphere. So, me and Gus. Gus, get up here. Up, Gus. Get up, good boy. Me and Gus are on shepherding duty. Gus has got his little collar thing here. And you put him on with a bungee. Um, I've got to get feathering so we can get the cattle back out. Getting the guard of honour from the cows on the way back to their paddock. Hey, no! Come on! So me and Gus are on the Shepherd's Quad bike. It's a Suzuki King Quad. And it has definitely seen better days. You don't realise how easy uh, the normal quad bike we have, the one we use for the cow, is to drive. So you've driven this one again. This one's got a semi-auto gearbox. You use your foot pedal to change gear. Whereas the, uh, the green one we have is fully automatic. Here's the dock. He's on day release from Dartmoor Prison. Garin goes here. You rev the nuts up as you get it to move. Go on, you know where you're going. You see, only some of them have got the stuff on them, the gutter in, as I call it. I've got a bit of respite from wearing a helmet for a minute whilst um, one of the groups is coming back out. He's coming back out to cells in the middle of the field there. There's some of the breeding cows and calves there in that paddock. They're not happy because the uh, bulls have been taken out and there's cattle running past them. Bulls have been out about 10 days now. So we'll be scanning in about five weeks time. So hopefully there's lots of cows and calves. Here comes Phil and the other group. Gus is waiting patiently. And yes, we are a world renowned research institute here, but we like to keep in touch with modern farming. As you can see, we have a hurdle tied up with some baler cord. So if you guys think the head collars and the guttering arrangement look weird on the cattle, you're absolutely right, they do. But uh, just important, I think, to add, it doesn't stop them eating, doesn't stop them drinking, doesn't really affect them in any way, really at all. Um, the, the halters that are on them are just normal halters. I think they're actually horse halters, to be honest. A bit more fancy than a cattle halter. Um, and then the guttering that is around their neck it just sits over the top, so it doesn't go underneath to restrict their breathing at all, it just sits over the top and it's strapped to the halter. Um, and then there's a little breath um, analyzer built into it to take the samples. You put them on the cattle and for five or ten minutes they think, oh what on earth is this? And then they just forget about them. So tomorrow is actually the last day of the experiment, so they will be coming off, cattle will be getting weighed, and they'll go back to being normal cows again. Right, we were going past the wheat on the way home, so I thought I might as well stop in and show you guys how it's looking. You can see where the sprayer turns off around that station there, where there's a bit of grass where the herbicide hasn't touched it. Um, this is the worst part of the field here as well, but you can see the heads are changing colour. Uh, this is Skyfall, so it's got horns like barley has. And if I can manage to pick a piece off, if I take a head off, it's just going to that cheesy stage inside, inside the grain. So if you were growing wheat for whole crop, it's sort of about the right stage to harvest now. But as I say, this is the worst part because we're coming in and out with the sprayer and then the weather station's there. But the other top end of that field is looking really good. Peckett's Fred, which is the field below us here, that's looking really good, other than this little triangle in the gateway where you can't unfold the spreader. And um, hopefully we're going to get a good harvest. Really looking forward to harvest this year. Hopefully going to be doing most of it ourselves. So that'll be something to look forward to. But uh, let's get back for a cup of coffee. Right guys, so we finished the cattle this morning. Done a couple other jobs and we're on to doing a bit of fur spinning. 
Um, we're actually spreading, it's called MOP, muriate of potash. So uh, it just helps to raise the levels of K in the field. So what you want is a good pH, um, a good potassium and a good potash index. So your P and your K in, uh, in your soil. So this is just help topping up the K. Um, you get P and K from dung as well as your N. Um, but when you cut the silage like we did on the bottom of the field, you take your P and your K away. Um, so it's always good to put it back. So that's what we're spreading. We're not putting it on very thick tools, only 50 kilos a hectare. But it looks like gravel, doesn't it? it looks like red gravel. We put that on, hope it rains a bit. Or it soaks in with the dew. And uh, yeah, we've got two or three fields to do. Just now, give me a hand. More interested in my gloves. But as I said earlier, we're only spreading 50 kilos a hectare, which is hardly anything. You have to have the back window open sometimes just to make sure you can hear it coming out because you definitely can't see it. But you might be able to see now behind me where we've cut silage and then there's a line, the sheep were grazing this top half of the field when we cut the bottom half. The bottom half's really quite nice and lush and green. And the top of here, there's still plenty of good grass but there's all the seedy bits on top so it might not hurt to come in with the topper and knock all that off. It's telling me I can't use my auto steer. Why not? Why can't I use my auto steer? Go for the good old fashioned turn it off and turn it on trick. See if that makes any difference. Turn it back on. Stop the machine, did I? Auto track's now on. I don't know with computers sometimes. It's going to steer itself fine now, so what that was all about, I have no idea. So why is that not working then? So I didn't press start, I did press start. Oh, computers! This all seems to be working. As it should do now. Good. I've actually set this field at 70 kilos a hectare, um, just because we took a silage cut off of it. So just to add to the fertilizer spreader saga, I've been around this field spreading with it on its fine dosing settings. So it's just sort of one of the three holes in the bottom opens, and the computer says the weight hasn't dropped at all. So I got out and had a look and. It hasn't dropped at all. It should have spread 200 kilos, which it's telling me it has, but that's only from how far we're traveling times by the width of our machine is working that out. Whereas the actual hopper weight hasn't really changed. And when you go out and look, it hasn't. So whether the product just isn't suitable to run on the fine dose setting or the fine dosing isn't working, and one of the holes isn't opening up properly. I don't know, but I put it back to the normal setting, so three holes open, um, and recalibrated it on the app, and spreading it now, and it seems to be working. So I know how much I should spread in the field, and I know what I started on on my hopper weight. So in a minute when I finish, hopefully, we'll be about right. This spreader has had a habit of being hard work the last 12 months. So a lot of money spent on it. Right, so just finished the field and we were about three kilos um, out from what I thought we should be spreading. So that's happy. I'm happy enough with that on a four hectare field. Um, so I'm guessing from that that the fine dosing either doesn't work or isn't working properly or the material that we've got in the hopper doesn't work with fine dosing, one or the other. So at least I know that now so that next time I can just set it up 
normally. Right, something that's been winding me up for a little while here is the amount of play that's in this back end. You see it wobbles? Don't like it doing that, because on the road it grabs you, chips it back into your tractor. So I'm hoping to tighten this one here, uh, silver bar, do the same under there. If we tighten them equally, it should reduce the play, I think. Right, not been quite so easy as I was hoping. If we have a look in the back of the tractor here, this pin, I don't know if you can see here, up to here is fine, and then there's a piece of thread missing, and it actually bends down. So I've only got as much adjustment as I can get out of this one up to that, well, up to where it turns from brown to silver again. So what I'm doing is pushing out the other side. I'm gonna get this as tight as I can this side and then tighten it on the other side because it's got a proper draft lock, if I go and show you that. So this side's got one of these, which is a proper draft lock for when you're ploughing or cultivating or something, so that in the air, when the incomes are up, he's locked, and then when he's down, this lifts up and gives a bit of play on the arms so he can travel. So I can adjust this one fairly easily. But if you see, there's still a bit of travel, so I'm gonna tighten up the other side as much as I can and then tighten them back this way to hopefully make them both tight. Only issue is at the minute, the machine is sticking out the side, this side more than it is the other, because the spreader is wider than the tractor. So I'll have a play and I'll show you how far I get. Right, so I managed to get it pretty tight now so it's not swaying on the link arms, which is good. The only downside is the machine is definitely further that way it is in the center so what I need to do is get a replacement one of these you see where that's bent because um, I've got all that adjustment that I can't use I need to be pulling it back towards me a fair bit so I'll go on the cramp website and get another one of those and get it next week then I can adjust it and hopefully be back to its former ways I don't know why it's only started doing that but um, it's quite annoying I better clear up my tools a minute. Cheeky little sneak peek at the new shed. That one's nearly done. It's got a tiny bit more concreting to do. I think next week the roller doors are coming for there. And then uh, we'll be ready to start filling it out with her. Move all the chemicals into that new room. Yeah, looking forward to harvest, tipping in there. Looks good. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We are so close, we're about a week away from being 12 months into doing YouTube videos, which is crazy when you think about it. It doesn't feel like we've been doing this for a year at all. So hopefully we can get as many new subs as we can before that year is up and see where we get to. But thank you to everyone that's been a long time subscriber and all the new ones as well. I do really appreciate it. But if you'd like to uh, follow me on any of my social media, they will be on the bottom of the screen somewhere. And uh, the links are in the description as well. So uh, thank you guys, and I'll see you on another video very soon. Cheerio.